Hi, I'm Manish. Hi, I'm Emma. And we're here to shed some light on three and four level lasers. So the question we were set was to explain why a four level laser can be more efficient than a three level laser. And to include a description of the difference between non radiative and radiative transition. Okay, so let's talk about population inversion. For any sort of laser to work, you need gain, and for gain, we need population inversion. So, why do we need population inversion? Between the levels of the laser transition, the rate of st stimulated emission has to be greater than the absorption rate for the gain. For a laser transition from level 2 to 1, n is the population of the corresponding level, um, b are the Einstein constants, coefficients, sorry, and rho is the energy density in this equation. Uh, because the Einstein coefficients are equal, the only requirement on these equations is that the higher level of energy of laser transition has a higher population than the lower level of the laser transition. So why don't we use a two-level system? Well, if we excite the atoms using a light pump, which can be a flash lamp, the system will reach an equilibrium where, at best, the absorption rate is equal to the rate of stimulated emission. In reality, there is also spontaneous emission, so N2 will be less than N1, and population inversion can't be achieved. So now I'm going to explain how a three-level laser work. Uh, works and uh, how they achieve population inversion. So light that is cast upon the atoms in the ground state, which is the E1 state, can send the atoms to the third level, which is the E3 state, if the light has the correct frequency. This process is called pumping. The atoms in the third state then quickly decay to the second energy state. During this transition, non-radiative decay occurs. Non-radiative decay is when heat is released during a transition that has a small gap. Radiative decay on the other hand releases light. The E2 to E1 decay um, has a, uh, a dis decay time which is much longer than the E3 to E2 decay time. Hence atoms accumulate in the second uh, energy state, thus giving a population inversion. At least 50% of the atoms need to get excited or pumped for um, population inversion to occur. Now I'll explain why four-level lasers can be more efficient than three-level lasers. Again, light pumps atoms into an excited state, this time the fourth level. There's a fast non-radiative decay, followed by the laser transition, resulting in a metastable state at the third level. The transition from the second state to the ground state is fast and non-radiative. This is what makes the difference between a three-level and a four-level laser. For the three-level laser, the lower level of the laser transition is the ground state. But for the four-level laser, the lower level of the laser transition is an excited state from which atoms quickly decay. The result is a well-populated metastable state for the higher level of the laser transition, and a nearly empty state for the lower level of the laser transition, making it easy to achieve population inversion even by exciting a small fraction of the atoms. So in conclusion, what have we learned? We've learned that a four-level laser is more efficient than a three-level laser. Um, and to achieve population inversion, a three-level laser requires over half the atoms to be pumped to excited state, as the ground state is the lower level of the laser transition. And the four-level laser can achieve population inversion with only a small proportion of atoms in the excited state. We've also explains that non-radiative decay is a transition that releases heat and a radiative transition releases light. The end. Thank you for listening and we created all the diagrams and wonderful wildlife photography ourselves. <laughs>